Hello friends, welcome back to my art studio for the December uh, program of our virtual Young at Art series. So welcome, it's good to see you all back. I miss Hannah, hopefully we are old friends by now. Do you remember that each month we're reading um, a Caldecott award-winning picture book for our art inspiration? So I picked for this month, The Big Snow, and this is an older Caldecott winner. Um, this is by Berta and Elmer Hader, or Hatter, I don't know how to pronounce their name. And this book is really, really beautiful. If you love nature, if you love spending your time outside in the woods, if you go, um, especially in the wintertime, and you're tromping around in the woods and it's quiet and it's snowy and you can look for animal tracks um, and you can watch um, for signs where birds have been trying to get berries or little animals like mice have been trying to harvest seeds or roots um, out in the woods. I just love those quiet little signs during the winter time that life is still going along for these animals. So this book talks a lot about how animals are getting ready for the winter and how they make it through the winter. And it's a really long book. So because we don't have a lot of time to share our ideas. I'm just going to read um, a couple pages of it from right in the middle, okay? And one of the things I want you to notice when we're reading this book is I really love the illustrations because they're based on nature studies. Like these artists really took some time to sit out there and watch animals and see how they were acting in nature, how they were looking for their food and how they were watching for predators and how they were just going about their daily lives trying to survive. So I think they're beautiful. I think it's really amazing how we can find beauty um, in these simple places. All right. So this is right in the middle. Sorry, starting in the middle for you guys. This is every day during the harvest season, the red squirrels and the gray squirrels had been busy storing nuts and acorns and seeds under the leaves and logs where they hoped to find them during the lean winter months. Their fur coats were thick and warm. They were ready for winter. So here's the big squirrel right here with a nut in his mouth. And I'm gonna do the best I can to hold up these illustrations. They're pretty detailed and they're pretty tiny. The pretty white-footed wood mouse flicked his long tail as he looked at the geese flying high in the sky. He knew that winter was coming, but he had worked hard and had a good supply of seeds stored away in his underground nest. He wouldn't be hungry in the months to come. So here's the white-footed wood mouse over here. Can you see that? Hopefully I got that lined up. The short-tailed meadow mouse didn't bother to look at the geese. Winter held no terrors for him. The tunnels made by the moles led to sweet plant roots and to the tulip bulbs in the garden. He would have plenty to eat. All right, and here's this little guy. He's eating some grass seeds. Shy, white-tailed deer browsed in the woods that covered the ridge at the top of the hill. Their coats were already thick and warm. Some of the deer saw the flying geese, but they never thought of leaving their woodland home where there was food for all growing so plentifully. All right, and here are the deer browsing on the hillside. And the geese flying out over the valley. Does it look like that? Do you guys ever go out and maybe you go to Mines of Spain and you look at the, look at the Mississippi River flowing by and you see the birds flying over it? It's one of our favorite places to go hiking. And there were hill dwellers who came out to hunt for food at night. The skunk family who lived under the wood pile didn't care which way the geese were flying. They were happy and content on the hillside. There was plenty of food to be found if one only followed one's nose, and they could sleep through the coldest winter months in their bed of leaves and soft grasses. And here's the skunk family over here, all in a line. The raccoons followed their path through the woods. They too knew that winter was coming. When the deep snow covered the land, they would climb into their soft bed in the hollow trunk of the old willow to sleep until the cold days passed. 
here is a raccoon mama and daddy maybe and a little raccoon the days grew shorter and shorter then the first snow blew down from the north when the round winter moon bathed the hillside in silvery light the mice and the rabbits came out to dance and frolic the skunks the raccoons and the deer were left well-marked trails in the early winter snow Then the night after Christmas, there was a rainbow around the moon. The wise owls knew what that meant. A rainbow around the moon meant more snow, much more. Hoo, hoo, hoo. The sad trilling call of the screech owl was heard up and down and across the hillside. And there's those owls. Look how big those eyes are. The owls were right. Soft gray clouds quickly filled the sky and blotted out the moon. A beautiful snowflake fell through the air. Then two flakes floated softly to earth, followed by three, then four. The snowflakes fell faster and faster. Millions of snowflakes fell from the sky. It snowed all that night and all the next day. Thick snow covered the branches of all the trees. There, can you see those pictures? the animals and the snowflakes. All right, so I'm going to stop with that for this book. Um, I had one other book that I wanted to show you really quick. This one is not a Caldecott Award winner, but it is a Caldecott Honor book. And these are poems. They have a poem for each month of the year. And I really love this illustrator as well. She does a beautiful job. Um, she works in watercolors and she makes beautiful watercolor illustrations. So this is a child's calendar. The poems are by John Updike and the illustrations are by Trina Shard Hyman. And I'm just gonna read you November's um, poem really quick, just to close out the year, cause I like that idea that we're ending the year and we're ready to start something new. So december first snow the flakes so few so light remake the world in solid white all bundled up we feel as if we were fat penguins warm and stiff the toy pack shops have split their sides and mother brings home things she hides old carols peel the dusk is dense there is a mood of sweet suspense the shepherds wait the kings the tree i'll wait for something yet to be some miracle and then it's here, wrapped up in hope, another year. So here is her picture of a family getting ready for Christmas time. I don't know if you can see this over here. There they are out shopping. Maybe they're shopping for a Christmas tree. Maybe they're just walking down the street of their town. So this is another really nice book if you just want to mark the passing of time and the changing of seasons. Um, this one talks a lot about those changes in nature as well. So, all right, so I always have so many ideas for art projects and I never know <laughs> which one to pick. <laughs> and I don't know what supplies you guys have access to. So I just grabbed a couple of ideas um, to show you really quick. One of them I made a while ago and I based it on the um, I think it's a Caldwell Cot award-winning book as well, The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with that one, um, but I love that book. I love that idea of a little boy going out and exploring the snow. And so one of our, my family, our favorite places to go out in the snow is at Swiss Valley Nature Center. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that at West of Town. And so I made this little collage in response to the Ezra Jack Keats book about a little boy going out in the snow. But this, this is my idea for being out at Swiss Valley. And I made little footprints in the snow as my little figure is going out and exploring and having a day out in nature. So I don't know if you can see that. So you can do something like this really easily as long as you have, oh, where did I hide them? Scissors and glue. And I always keep all my scrap paper 
in a file here so that I can just grab it whenever I want to make something with scrap paper. So I got a lot of scrap paper in here. You see, you got a lot of stuff left over from our projects. So that's an idea for you. If you guys just want to do paper and scissors and glue and just put something together out of your imagination. Um, the other thing that I had that I wanted to show you that I just love, I was taking my kiddos sledding at school one day after school pickup. And I just had this memory that I, that I thought of that I kind of captured in my mind of these long late afternoon shadows kind of streaming across a hillside. And I noticed that all our little footprints in the snow where we'd been sledding and where we'd climbed back up the, up the hill were kind of this beautiful, um, like dark blue turquoise, not turquoise, periwinkle, there we go. <laughs> dark blue periwinkle color um, in the shadows. So if you ever go out and play in the snow and look at the shadows, you'll notice that they're a different color. They're not just like gray. Shadows in snow are usually some kind of bluish color and that's part of how it reflects the light of the sky. So I came home and I made a piece of artwork of my memory. I've had this for a long time. Sorry, it's framed in glass. So I don't know if you can, oh, you're just gonna get a glare from the screen. I don't know if you guys can see that. But here's our figures in the in the shadows and there's a shadow of a tree. No, nope, that's not really gonna work for you. And I put in all of our little footprints going up the hillside. So I don't know how to make that better for you. You're just getting a reflection of a reflection. Oh, well, sorry guys. So you can do something like that too, if you're thinking about like your footprints and your shadows. I just did that one with colored pencil. Um, you could do it with crayons or markers or whatever kind of drawing implement that you have that you have available. So the last thing that I wanted to show you was something really simple that I just made up when I was thinking about that. I was thinking about how I'm looking forward to the first snowfall and I'm looking forward to going back out to Swiss Valley and looking at the animal tracks in the snow with my kiddos and just enjoying how like delicate and, and um, you know, how transient they are, how you have these little tracks in the snow, but they can get wiped away so easily by our own footprints or when it snows again or when the snow melts. So I thought I would make a little sketch, a little collage of different animal footprints. And I actually went online and I was like, let's see if I can get a little refresher. So if you want to remember what a specific animal's footprints are looking like in the snow, you could definitely look that up. There's so much information available online, but I, I drew a sketch of a bunch of different little footprints. I don't know if you can see those either. On some blue paper. Can you see that? And I made them all kind of crisscrossing. There's not really a specific direction to this because I wanted to make sort of a, like an abstract piece that just showed these animals coming across each other. Maybe there was some food nearby, or maybe it was just the crossing of a little animal highway. So I don't know if you can see this really well. These are bird footprints and a lot of birds leave prints like this. And some of them are really, really tiny and some of them are really big. It could be a turkey or it could be, you know, a little junco or a cardinal or some one of the little songbirds. So, um, birds make beautiful little footprints and I love how they're usually all clustered together and running into each other and running over each other. If you see footprints that have a little line, oh, is this going to focus for me? I don't know. You have a little line running up the middle of these little tiny footprints. That's left by a mouse because he drags his tail behind him. And these footprints, can you see them? I only paint, colored in one. So they go hop, hop, hop up across the page. That's what a bunny rabbit's footprints look like in the snow. It lands with its back feet, plants its front feet, takes off again, lands with its back feet, and then its front feet come down, and then it takes off again, and it goes hop, 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 right across. So for this one, I drew the outline with pencil, just so I had a sense of what I wanted to do. And then I took, I have these, I don't know if you remember these, I have these tempera cakes, 
but they're just like watercolors too. Or if you have any of like the just bottles of tempera paint or whatever. That works really, really well. I did this on cardstock, so my paper was a little bit thicker for painting. But I just got my brush wet and I just used my white paint on my brush. And I just painted in some of my little animal footprints. And I'll probably go back and I'll probably paint in more and try and make a little pattern of animal footprints all over this page for me to remember. So there's another idea for you. And the very last thing that I wanted to talk about before we go is something very traditional, paper snowflakes. I just thought about these and I was like, you know what? I haven't made any paper snowflakes in a long, long time. And then I had this really crazy idea. I was like, well, what if you could make paper snowflakes but when you were cutting out the shapes in your snowflake, you tried to cut out animal tracks. I don't know if that will work, but I'm gonna try really, really quick just to see what happens. And I wanted an animal track that was symmetrical. So I think I'm gonna try and do a bird track. And I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. Cause that's what playing with art is, right? We're just trying out new things and getting creative and seeing what happens. So I'm gonna take just a piece of white paper that I put cut into a square and I'm going to fold it in half. Oop, let me get it lined up. Okay, so I just folded it in half, fold it in half, and then I'm going to fold it in half again to make a smaller square like this. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to fold it across one time to turn it into a triangle. All right. Okay. So am I triangle right there? Do you see that? Okay, so I have this corner right down here. This is where everything is all connected still. So I'm gonna look at my bird track and it's like there's the, the toe that goes back behind the bird and then there's three toes that go forward. So I'm gonna see, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but I'm gonna take that point where everything's connected and I'm gonna cut a back toe and then I'm gonna cut a forward toe and right at the middle I'm going to cut a middle toe. Okay, so can you see that? I have my front toe, I have the toe that goes out towards the side a little bit, and then I have my back toe, just like my bird prints. Do you see that? Do you see how I did one of my bird prints? But I only did half of it, right? Okay, because when I unfold it, because it's a paper snowflake, then it's going to be symmetrical, right? I did it along the fold. All right, I'm gonna do a couple really quick little shapes over here as well. Maybe something like that. And maybe an oval sort of shape. And maybe one more triangle shape. And you can do whatever you want when you're cutting paper snowflakes, right? It's hard to tell how it's all gonna turn out until you unwrap it. All right, now I need to do something over here. Over here, I'm gonna do like a couple of scallopy shapes. Whoop, like waves or like some kind of billow, maybe clouds or mountains or something. Okay, so look at this. I still have my bird toe right here, my bird footprint. And then I did some little Shapes over here and some shapes over here. Let's unfold this and see what we get. First off, there's my bird foot. Do you see that? Wait, there's something, there we go. Find something dark to hold it up against. Okay, and then let's keep unfolding it and see what it turns out to be. There it is. There's my paper snowflake and it's almost like it's got a hidden message inside it, right? 
because it's celebrating the bird tracks that I saw in the snow. So there you go. You can make a bunch of those and put those up on your window. Celebrating nature and celebrating winter time. All right, guys, I hope you have had a wonderful year. Lots of growth, lots of good times with your family, lots of adventures together. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holidays. So have a wonderful end to your year. I will see you next year. Take care. Stay well. Bye, guys.